What's cracking, big dogs? Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to the headquarters. My name is Nicholas. This is BDG. Big dogs. Gotta eat. Gotta drink too. Got this cold brew this morning. And I was like, yeah, let me get your large cold brew and uh, give me an extra shot of espresso. And the girl was like, are you sure? Like our cold brew already has a ton of caffeine in it. We usually don't suggest putting extra espresso into the cold brew. And I was taken aback. I was flabbergasted. I was like, do you know, do you know who you're talking to right now? Do not tell me what to do. And she said, okay. And I said, on top of do not telling me what to do, do not draft these wide receivers. And she said, oh shit, my guy is serious today. So I shared with her. The wide receivers, I won't be drafting in fantasy football this year. And I thought, hey, you know what? I actually remembered I have a YouTube channel where people like to get fantasy football advice for whatever reason. I figured I shared it with her. I might as well share it with y'all. We did an episode a couple days bike. My running backs to stay away from. The do not draft official running back list for 2021 fantasy football. But as of right now, we're seeing some wide receivers. We're seeing some pass catchers just strictly going too damn high. And I apologize for the tardiness of this video. We try to get everything out 5 a.m. Eastern time every day. But I was at the, the Knickerbockers game last night. All I got to say is Knicks in nine. I won't take up too much more of your time. So with that being said, the official do not draft list for wide receivers 2021 fantasy football. Let's tuck our shirts in. Let's stop yelling. And let's eat. All right, we're coming in guns blazing on this list. This was the dude. A couple of the dudes on this list were guys that I absolutely loved last year, but we're starting to see a starting to see a trend in fantasy football overall. I, I, I think I think everybody is collectively getting a little bit too high on you know redraft is a one year sprint. Okay, you're picking one team for one year, and that's it. And in one year, the only thing that we could be semi certain of is the opportunity at hand for some of the players, right? We know who the starters are. We know market share, target share, things like that. We don't know that at all, actually, but we can get a good guesstimate. I think a lot of the times, and I talked about this in the running back video, it's a reason why I'm not particularly in love with dudes like DeAndre Swift and Travis Etienne. Love them as a player. Think they're talented as shit, but a lot of the times those guys don't lend themselves to getting big opportunity numbers, right? And I think I think over the last few years, people have become obsessed with, with the talent of players they've become obsessed with the prospect profile what they did in college and how they should project into the nfl and they land in the nfl and travis Etienne lands in a spot where there's 42 weapons on the jacksonville jaguars they're led by a rookie quarterback he is a rookie he's being used as a fucking wide receiver it's easy to project that we're going to look back and be like oh no wonder he only got nine touches a game because urban meyer told us that he was going to be used sporadically and used all over the field and all this kind of shit right and i think we're doing the same thing with wide receivers which is why i'm starting this list off with DJ Moore of the Carolina Panthers. Everybody's obsessed with him as a player, him as uh, what he was coming out of college. He has a very, very good prospect profile, right? Young breakout age, all this kind of shit. But he's been in Carolina now for a few years. And as far as fantasy football is concerned, he has not come close to hitting his projected ceiling, right? We've, you know, I think last year he probably was borderline like top five, top eight dynasty wide receiver. And I get it. He's young. He broke out at a young age, but he has not hit his ceiling. And I don't think we're going to see him hit his ceiling this year. Right now, he's currently going off the board as the wide receiver 16, 42 overall. So you're talking about the early fourth round. This offense in Carolina, despite being led by Joe Brady, is a very slow paced offense. And now Sam Darnold's taking over, right? Teddy Bridgewater is probably part of the reason this was a slow paced offense. But Sam Darnold has always led a slow paced offense as well. He's not someone who runs the hurry up. He's not someone who lends himself to having a high, a high fast paced offense. And Joe Brady, we only have a one year sample size of what he did in the NFL last year, but it was slow. It was slow. And I projected to be slow again. If you look at the snaps or you look at the pace from last year this is per football outsiders there is no category right you're talking about just overall seconds per play seconds per play in neutral situation carolina ranked bottom three in just about every category when it comes to pace and dj moore is not necessarily like a big play guy right so it's not like okay slow pace maybe the volume or the targets will be down a little bit but you know he's ripping off 50 60 yard plays and we look at what this offense will be right curtis samuel is gone uh but c mac he bite C-Mac bike with Samuel leaving. Yes, that does open up. I think he had like between 90 and 100 targets last year, but C-Mac's going to be 
ripping off his typical 110 to 120 targets on the year. So that eats up a lot of the targets that work on the short intermediate targets. And I still very much expect DJ Moore to be, you know, very involved in this offense. He'll probably have a target share between like 20 and 23 percent. But in an offense that's slow paced, that won't have a ton of overall volume in the passing game, 20 to 23 percent of a target share in an offense where maybe those targets are inaccurate. Low average depth of throw. Short intermediate throws that won't lend itself to a ton of accuracy. This could be a very disappointing season again. DJ Moore at the end of the day is a player that's, your fantasy team's not gonna lose because you picked him, but we're trying to win here, man. We're talking about redraft. We're talking about season long content right now. We're talking about a player that we wanna draft at the end of the third, early fourth round that's gonna help us actually win. That has a high ceiling, right? DJ Moore will not make your fantasy team lose, but he's definitely not gonna help you win. So you can bet on DJ Moore being so talented that he overcomes the possibility of Sam Darnold being just a bad quarterback, that this offense is slow paced, that they have a lot of other weapons, and Robbie Anderson, who has chemistry already with Sam Darnold and Christian McCaffrey coming back. Like, you can bet on all of these things that DJ Moore is just so talented that they won't matter, or you could just be a good fantasy football player and not do that. So, I will have very little, very little shares of DJ Moore very few shares of DJ Moore. Let's be grammatically correct here on a damn Thursday morning, Nicholas, of DJ Moore in 2021 fantasy football as. I will have very few shares of Adam Thielen of the Minnesota Vikings. Currently going off the board as the wide receiver, 21, 49th overall. I loved Adam Thielen last year. He was one of my must-draft wide receivers. He was a guy I was touting everywhere and anywhere. Anyone that would open their ears to listen to me, the girl at the barista shop, you guys, Adam Thielen, Adam Thielen, Adam Thielen. The tide has turned this year. We are not drafting Adam Thielen. Once Justin Jefferson assimilated himself into the Minnesota Vikings offense as a Thielen owner last year, you were praying for a big play, a broken play, or a touchdown from Thielen in order for him to keep producing fantasy-wise. And he did that most of the time, right? His touchdown numbers were out of control. He ended up finishing as the wide receiver nine in fantasy football. Just another caveat why we draft running backs early because the difference last year between Adam Thielen and Cole Beasley, wide receiver nine to wide receiver 35, was three and a half fantasy points per game. The reason he finished as the wide receiver nine in fantasy football was because of his 14 touchdowns. He had 14 receiving touchdowns last year, which was third in the NFL. Most of the time, that 14 receiving touchdown total would have led the NFL in most other years. We had Devontae Adams, Tyreek Hill going absolutely nuts last year. When you look at the other statistics of Adam Thielen, you look at the actual volume outside of receiving touchdowns, and this is where this is where it makes too much sense to fade Adam Thielen this year. 108 targets ranked 27th among wide receivers last year. 74 catches, 24th among wide receivers, 925 receiving yards, 24th among wide receivers. If there was ever a more obvious outlier to predict not to happen next year, please let me know. And you can compare, you know, Calvin Ridley and Julio Jones' situation to Adam Thielen and Jeff Justin Jefferson. You got the young buck coming up and ascending him for the wide receiver one. But Ridley's ascension has taken four years. It took Justin Jefferson about four minutes. And now the passing offense runs through Justin Jefferson. Over the first half of the year, Justin Jefferson was seeing just over five targets a game. Second half of the year, over 10 targets a game. He became the guy. He became became the short guy. He became the intermediate guy. And I know Adam Thielen got a lot of red zone work, important green zone targets, but that started shifting towards Justin Jefferson at the end of the year as well. And I think we'll continue to see that trend push towards Jefferson in 2021. Realistically, last year, Thielen had about five games where he saw real volume. He had eight catchers or more in five games. They came against Houston, Seattle, Dallas, Jacksonville, and New Orleans. All shit pass defenses, especially at the time of the year when he played against them. In the other 10 games, when he was not playing against Houston, Seattle, Dallas, whatever, Jacksonville, in the other 10 games, he had four catches or fewer in nine of 10. He had three catches or fewer in seven of 10. He had 60 receiving yards or fewer in nine of 15 games last year. He was basically Tyler Lockett with touchdowns. And like I said, they do run a lot of red zone and end zone type stuff to Adam Thielen. But from weeks four through the end of the season, right, when Justin Jefferson wasn't really playing the first few weeks of the season, obviously the numbers are not going to be there. But from weeks four through the end of the season, Justin Jefferson had more red zone targets than Adam Thielen. The only reason we don't think that way is because Adam Thielen turned like 75% of his red zone targets into touchdowns, which is absolutely out of control and won't happen again. So with Adam Thielen, I mean, he'll probably feel finish around if you're drafting Adam Thielen early you're literally doing it because you think he's going to score a lot of touchdowns again this year that rate is just wildly unsustainable Thielen's probably more likely to finish around where his like other statistics were where those receptions and targets and receiving yards were which were you know wide receiver 24 to 28 in that range so you're looking at a low-end wide receiver two high-end wide receiver three as the second passing option 
in a low passing volume offense. Like they're a run heavy team. Obviously they want to run the offense through Dalvin Cook. So Thielen's another guy that you're drafting in the fourth round that doesn't have much of a ceiling. You're looking at other guys that are going within, you know, five picks of him either before or after per underdog ADP, both Rams wide receivers, Cooper Cup and Robert Woods. Looking at Mike Davis, I would take uh, in one quarterback leagues, even I would take Lamar and Kyler, Kyler Murray over Adam Thielen. All the wide receivers going in that range. You have T. Higgins, you have Kenny Galladay, you have Deontay Johnson. I mean, listen, at the end of the day, Adam Thielen, again, is just a high floor, but like low ceiling player. You're banking on him, what, scoring another 12 touchdowns? Not going to happen this year. So we are fading Adam Thielen and the last player on this list. We will get to some honorable mentions afterwards, but that's Juju Smith-Schuster, man. Current ADP of wide receiver 36, 79.6 overall. So he's about the 80th pick, which is seventh-ish round, if my math is correct. Whatever we once thought Juju to be as a young up-and-coming stud wide receiver is at the end of the day just just purely, purely false fake fiction fan news, okay? Uh, His success, I'm looking at Matt Harmon's reception perception, which is, you know, I, I cite it all the time. It's one of my favorite resources in the industry. His success against man and press coverage has been diminishing year over year since he's come into the league. And if you look at his most recent numbers, Juju fell into the fourth and sixth percentile respectively in man and press coverage success rate in the fourth percentile like literally cannot beat man and press coverage is he still good against zone yeah sure but that's really about it he's Jarvis Landry he's Cooper Cup good football player but he's going to be exactly whatever the situation he's in lends itself to make him and you look at the situation he's currently in I mean he has two wide receivers two young wide receivers that are already better than him in Deontay Johnson and Chase Claypool we just look at the trend of Juju man in 2018 he had eight 100 yard receiving games in 2019 he had one 100 yard receiving games last year he had zero 100 yard receiving games trend's pretty fucking obvious Ben is deteriorating they just drafted a running back with their first round pick. They're going to try to run the ball, run the ball, run the ball. It's more targets to the running back this year, which might seem dumb considering I was touting Deontay Johnson last week and everything I'm talking about the situation kind of goes against Deontay as well. And trust me, I'm very, very aware of the risks involved in drafting Deontay Johnson and this whole passing offense and the running offense too. But with DJ, I at least believe in the player. So let that be known. This is a very subjective take on Deontay Johnson. If he busts this year, I have I'll, I will have no surprise, but I think Deontay Johnson is, is good enough to overcome the situation he's in. But with you Juju, I don't believe in the situation, nor do I believe in the player. So there's no way I'm taking him. He's an easy fade for me, regardless of, of the price. Sixth round, seventh round, eighth round. I just don't want Juju on my team. Along with a couple of these other guys, honorable mentions to wrap up the video. Odell Beckham Jr., man, wide receiver 27, 64th pick overall. Why are you still drafting Odell Beckham at the 604? It's 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 incredible. He literally hasn't been good for fantasy football since 2016. And we just had and he was like, oh, he's always injured. Like we just had a full 16 game season of him playing in 2019 and he barely topped a thousand yards. Last year, he played in seven games in the offense. That's going to be the offense for 2021. He played in seven games last year. His 16 game pace from last year's seven games that he played in 98 targets. Not 98 catches, 98 targets, 53 catches, 729 receiving yards, and six touchdowns. Y'all are obsessed with this hypothetical upside that is just not actually there. Y'all are obsessed with OBJ's fast twitch muscle fibers from four years ago. This is a wildly run-heavy offense. It's clearly not going to feature him. Just stop fucking drafting Odell Beckham in the fifth and sixth round. It's ridiculous. And I've been saying this for years now. So please, please stay away from Odell Beckham Jr. The last guy on this list is LaVisca Chanel of the Jacksonville Jaguars. This is kind of a random take. I don't really have a super hard stance on this. And I, I have not I have not heard anyone make like an actual good argument for drafting LaVisca this year outside of like they like him as a player. He He's going off the board wide receiver 45 at the 902. I just have a bad feeling about Visca this year statistically. I have no faith in, in Urban Meyer using him in any sort of capacity that will help us in fantasy football. I think he's going to use him as a weapon, as he's been saying for basically every fucking player on this team. And I feel like he's going to get like four to six opportunities per game. One or two of them is going to be a carry. He'll get like three to four targets a game. And they bring in ETN to be a weapon. They bring in Marvin Jones, who's going to take away some of the deep targets and in, in 12 personnel sets, right? Two tight end sets. I wouldn't be surprised whatsoever if it's Marvin Jones and DJ Chark on the outside. Side, and LaVisca Chanel is just sitting his ass on the bench. So I don't know. This is just a gut feeling again on Visca. I, I, there's probably no way that I'm taking him if you have to use single digit round draft capital on him, which is what you have to do right now. Late eighth round, early ninth round. There's, I don't really see it this year in Jacksonville. Maybe next year, but not this year for Visca. All right, y'all. Those are five wide receivers I will not be touching in 2021 fantasy football drafts 
If you enjoyed the video, make sure you hit the thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe to the channel if you're new and drop some comments down below. Uh, one, what kind of content you want to see going forward in the summer Two, some of the wide receivers that you will not be drafting under any circumstances. I will link the underdog fantasy ADP right now. So go use that ADP to let me know who you will not be taking at their current draft spot. OK, don't be just throwing out random fucking names and zingers. Look at the numbers. Tell me the big facts and tell me who you will be staying away from at the wide receiver position. OK, that's it. Uh, I will see you all tomorrow on Fade the Public. Thank you, as always, for hanging out with me. Subscribe to the channel if you want to continue to hang out with me for whatever reason. Love y'all. I'm out.